right, so this is just a little thing I like to call MS Paint history. But, um, yeah, basically I'm just going to tell a little story on history and just animate it horribly and just show off my horrible narration skills. Um, I'm not going to bother citing sources or making sure every exact thing is correct. This is going to be sort of like if you ask your grandpa what happened in World War II and he might have been there, he might have seen the fighting, he might have heard the politics, but he's not like an expert. So yeah, it's going to be that level of stuff, just word of mouth. So don't don't be signing this on any freaking historical essay you're doing. But yeah, this is just for fun. Um, history is a very touchy subject, so if you get offended, uh, don't. And, uh, yeah. So, um, this idea was given to me by Piano Man, something, 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 their numbers, I think. Or is this the Piano Man? I don't know. Name's right up there. But, um, let's do, let's do the capture of Guam. Um, so, 1988, not 1988, God, 1898, um, very different time from 1998. Um, Spain and the United States had entered war. Um, it was the Spanish-American War. Um, one of the islands under Spanish control was Guam in the Pacific Ocean. And America was like, I want that. So they sent out a U.S. naval fleet. I'm not sure if fleet's the right word. A couple ships under Captain Henry Glass. Um, for any of you who like your specifics, it's June 20th. Um, they come over to Guam. They're like, oh, yeah, we're ready to fight some Spanish. Span Spanish? Spanish. There we go. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, the only ships that were at Guam at the time was a Japanese ship that was trading some freaking coconuts. And, yeah, they were sort of like, ah, oh, wanted to wanted to shoot some Spanish people. Um, anyway, the prominent elite members of society were on the shore going, hey, look, it's the Americans. Now understand that it, things move slow. News goes slow during this time period. And they don't know that they're at war with the United States at this point. And the U.S. ships, including the USS Charleston and the USS City of Peking and the USS Australia, they start firing... Well, Charleston fired. I just named the other ships. But Charleston fired uh, 13 rounds at the fort and... Uh, there was no return fire, and the the fort wasn't damaged at all. And one of the Spanish guys was like, "Hey, they're trying to salute us. Go go get some artillery so we can salute them back." Hey, America, welcome! And uh, yeah, um, they started to they sent out a party of people to go out on a rowboat to the USS Charleston to welcome them. And then they got up onto the boat and they're like, "Hey, we're here. Welcome!" and Glass is just like, haha, we're at war and you're under arrest. You're prisoners of war now. And they're like, oh, bummer. And, um, yeah, they actually let the dudes go for the day because they needed to alert the Guam government or governorial government, provincial government, I guess, that, um, they were at war and they needed to surrender. So they go out on their boat and, um, yeah, they tell them that they're at war. I don't think the governor wanted to surrender, but ultimately, Guam did surrender to the U.S. Um, no one really killed anybody. Um, at the end of the day, the American flag was hoisted over the island, and all the freaking boats were playing the Star Spangled Banner, which I think that's a pretty cool way to take an island. Um, and yeah, that's about it. That's how the United States took Charles. Uh, not Charleston. That's how the United States took Guam. Yep. Here we go. Mira, como estoy sufriendo.